All right, so welcome to number uh, session number four. This is the last session. I'm very interested to see how you guys are doing in terms of working through all the various tutorials and obviously the assignment as well. I want to know, um, are you having any issues or problems getting your assignments up? Uh, we're very excited to get a whole new batch of OERs all linked to the uh, curriculum. So that, uh, that's good news. You might remember, first of all, a little bit of housekeeping, a little an announcement. Um, I have negotiated with uh, the team in Harare, and they are happy that we that uh, we take a little bit longer in getting the resources into the database. So the extension is until Wednesday, five o'clock, seventeen hundred hours. So you've got the you got the weekend. And you've got uh, three working days as well to, to make sure that your OER that you put up into EduConnect is uh, a quality resource. And so it reflects well on yourself and on your institution. All right. But uh, first of all, let's just see, are there any queries or questions so far in terms of the assignment? Are you all clear about what is required? And um, uh, in the, the WhatsApps, there's been some interesting comments, but I would like to hear from the team who's here. Okay, hello, C. How are you? Afternoon. No, I'm good. I'm good. Fine. I think uh, it was very interesting. I'm still working on the assignment, but I'm uh, going through some challenges in terms of network. But otherwise, uh, it's very interesting especially when you are looking at the sources from the internet mm. and also comparing the sources with the requirements of the Ministry of Primary Standard Education in terms of the syllabus. Uh, I'm, I'm discovering a lot of materials which are useful. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that there are many different skill sets that you've picked up over the last few days which would help you in your normal uh, teaching, especially the preparing of materials, etc. Ezekiel, hang in there. I know the bandwidth is issue. The best we can do under the, the all these lockdowns. Um, so yeah, please persevere. Uh, I tell Vision One Plus. You've got your hand up. Uh, have you something to tell us? <laughs> Hello, Andrew. It's Hello. Uh, Vimbai. It's Did Vimbai and Mutasa. Excellent. How is your experience so far with this round of training? There is a lot of confusion today because mm -hmm. uh, we we have our document prepared and then we went to uh, creativecommons.org. Mm -hmm. So then now we don't know how to join all these things the, the, the third, so that we go to EduConnect. We upload to EduConnect. don't know how confusing. Okay, so good point. And it is potentially confusing. Please remember that EduConnect is the national, the Zimbabwean uh, repository for curriculum resources. All right, so... And um, MOPSI, the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education, is uh, encouraging teachers to share their resources through EduConnect. The one that you went to first, OER Commons, is actually based in California. Their, their servers are in California, uh, in the States. Um, they are more a global platform. So when you put uh, your resources up there, they offer you the ability to tag your resources to the American curriculum, but that means nothing to us, all right? Um, however, their audience is much larger. So um, uh, teachers around the world look at OER Commons in order to find curriculum resources. Um, so ideally, it would be nice to get it up there. In tutorial number four, uh, I explain how to do it. There is a little bit of a trick for OER Commons. It's not quite so straightforward. And um, you have to give them a link, not the resource itself. So um, I would say only put on OER Commons if you feel you want to share it with the world. Um, if you're quite happy just to share it with Zimbabwe, for now, the EduConnect um, 
repository is the best one. All right, that was that's interesting. Uh, anyone else with their hand up or query or some reflections or frustrations that they would like to share? Yes. Good afternoon, Andrew. Afternoon, I can hear you nicely. Yes, Laurai. What has your experience been so far, Tara? I still sorry to to draw you back a bit. Not a problem. Uh, yes, the, the, the previous speaker, I think that was Wimbai. Uh, I I think her question was uh, is the same with me. They are facing problems on how to upload to the Edge Connect to the Zimbabwean Edge Connect, not to the Creative Commons. All right. How to navigate? Yes. How to navigate to upload the material to edu, edu connect that's that's the question i think the same question with the former speaker we buy all right let me do a demonstration it's very quick and very easy so let me do it now on the screen so you can see the uh the steps and um hopefully then that will make things easier for you so um, can you see the screen uh the url to go to is mopsy dot online and then when you, whoops, I spelt it wrong. Uh, when you go in there, uh, you'll see you come to this site here. So you, to, first of all, you've got to navigate there. So step one is make sure that you so, um, they will allow you to upload resources if they don't know who you are. So you can't do it anonymously. You have to have an account, all right? So you see here it says sign an account. So I'm going to use that, but you would, if you haven't done it before, you have to go to create an account, all right? It's not very difficult, just five, or five questions. Uh, what's your first name? What is your last name? Email, and then can you create a password? All right, so it's a very simple little account. There's not a lot of information, but um, you still need to do that. Once you have, um, you will get an email sent to, uh, to, to your in inbox, which you have to click on to activate the account. So it wants to check that the email that you've provided is a live um, working email. It's, not, it's uh, not a dummy one or a machine fake. All right. So once you um, have the account, then you can sign in. I'm trying to remember what mine was. In fact, I can't remember. Uh, let me just go in here. Give me a second. I'm going to use a different one where my machine can remember. I've, I, I have so many accounts, I often forget. So I, I allow my machine to remember for me. Give me a second while I just log in on this browser. All right, once you have logged in correctly, then your name should appear in the top right-hand corner. All right, if, if me, I've even got my little, uh, my little photograph there as well, which you can put on your, um, on your portfolio profile. If you want to do all that type of thing, you can come on here and you can say edit your profile and you can add some more information if you want. Okay, so some more information and uh, so on. All right. Um, then, then you're ready to go to submit a resource. Now it will allow you to see all the metadata. Uh, we, well, metadata is just a fancy word for saying descriptors. Um, uh, terms that describe the resource. So um, now when you go to submit a resource, it wants to know what is the title. All right. So um, have you, has it got a name? So um, forms of water is um, so who is the resource author? Now, um, if it was a team, then you can uh, put a whole load of different people in here. If it's you, you can stick your name in. If you're doing it on behalf of someone else, can you put their name in? 
All right. It would help if I could spell. I don't know, it's a bit small. Can you see that? Let me make it a bit bigger for you. So you can see when I'm typing. There you go. Um, um, then uh, who is the resource publisher? So this could be your school, it could be the ministry, it could be um, uh, an entity. If you want, um, you can leave it blank. But who is, if you are the author, is there someone who's the publisher? All right. So if you, if you don't have an idea, then you can just put the ministry in if you want. Mopsy. Um, I'll just do that. All right. And then it wants to know which level is it for and it ranges from ecd a right through to form six all right so i'm going to say grade two now what you choose in this level will affect the subjects that are on offer all right so um if you choose for example let me go back here form six then you've got a whole load of extra subjects all right but i'm just in form uh, grade two all right, so that I'm restricted to choosing these subjects. All right, so I'm going to go for maths and science. And then uh, what is the topic? What is the resource topic? Now, you can just pull it from the curriculum if you want. You can use the, the, uh, the in your syllabus document. Uh, what is the topic? So I'm just going to do oh, no. uh, water. Water. I'm trying to remember what it actually is. I've forgotten now. And then a short little description about what it is. Um, uh, this video shows um, the three different states that water can be found in. All right. And what are those states? It is gas, liquid, and Ice, solid. All right, so give it a little, a little description so that when people find it, they can get a little bit of information. Is this what they're looking for? Or are they looking for something else? Remember, you're trying to make it easy for people to work out whether this resource can be used or not. And then it says resource type. Is it a curriculum and syllabi? Uh, I've asked you to create educate, teaching and learning resources. All right, so I'm hoping that in most of your cases, what you're doing is you're giving me uh, teaching and learning resources. And then here's the license. All right, so which Creative Commons license have you chosen for this resource? And again, I've said it every time that I've had a session with you guys, uh, I encourage you to go for the, the most open, the least restrictive Creative Commons licenses possible. Um, so I would encourage you to go for these first, uh, this one, CC BY and CC BY SA. So it's that one and that one, but it's not my call. That's the beauty of open resources is that you have some control, you have some say. So if you feel strongly that you want one of the others, uh, then please, it's up to you. Uh, can you choose one? All right, and then it asks you, what is your resource format? So um, is it a document? Is it a hyperlink? Is it a little podcast, an audio? Now, the one I'm describing is the, um, the one I've shown you previously with Grace demonstrating these three different forms of, of um, uh, water. So I know that that's a video. All right. And then it says, choose, a uh, choose the resource file. All right. Um, and now you need to go and look on your, your machine for the file. So if it's a video, for example, then I would must go and find the video file. All right. We cancel that. Close that. If I had chosen a hyperlink, all right, then it wants to know where on the internet is it. Okay, a hyperlink is a web link. All right. So then you would have to go and find your resource and... Um, then paste the URL in. So let me just show you an example. Um, let me go to the other one. Give me a second. Down here. So let's say, for example, um, it was a YouTube video. 
let's say I'll just go to uh, one that we made the other day. So let's go and search for um, Zimbabwe RTT. Does that work? Here we go. These are our recordings from the last few days. All right. So then you could say, all right, I'm interested in sharing oh, this I resource. All right. So then what you'll do is you uh, either take the URL from up here. You see at the top, there's a URL. You can just click on it and go copy. Or if you know your YouTube, you can actually come in here to the share button and then just say here, copy. You get a smaller URL. It's actually a bit easier to use. But either will work. So uh, I think the easiest one, and it's not just uh, um, YouTube, it's all websites. So wherever you've put it on the internet, you can just grab that, go copy. And now you can go back to our, our resource. And then where it says hyperlink, now you need to paste. So right click and paste. And you can see it's put the URL into that field. Once you've done all that, you can click submit resource. Now I'm not going to submit because um, it's a load of rubbish that I've written there. So you, you need to be very accurate when you are either uploading your file or you're linking via a URL to where you've put it on the internet. All right. The reason it has to be accurate is because all of the resources are quality assured. So I think it was Richard today was mentioning in the WhatsApp that he's getting a message saying that his resource had been um, set aside for approval. I'm afraid all the resources will be checked. All right, we don't want rubbish in the database. We want only the very best resources. So um, there is a person at the ministry who is checking. We had to send a message to them quickly and say, oi, all these resources are arriving. Can you be on your toes, please? We would like you to either approve or not approve the various resources that are coming in. So that's the edge you can, I'm not going to click on that button because this is just rubbish. All right. But um, the, the nice thing is that as over time, we will build up a nice uh, database of lots and lots of curriculum resources. So uh, thank you very much. All right. Uh, Tarai, did that answer your question? Uh, thank you, Mr. Andrew. Uh, that was very clear now. <laughs> okay, cool. See, it's not there's no rocket science, eh? Hey? All this tech is yeah. supposed to make things easier, not harder. Yeah. Although yeah, very easy. Yeah, thanks. Cool. All right. Any other questions, queries, frustrations that need to be cleared up? All right, I see now we have 33 participants. When I made the announcement earlier, there were only 20. So let me say it again. Um, I have engaged with UNESCO Harari and they've agreed to give you some additional time to finish the tutorials and to submit your resource. So the new deadline is five o'clock on Wednesday. So you've got the weekend and three working days to complete the study and then to prepare a resource and upload it into EduConnect like we've just demonstrated. All right, I'll put that notice in the, the WhatsApp, but yeah, that gives us a bit of a breathing space. We really do want quality resources. So yeah, spend a little bit of time, choose something that you've already made that you're very proud of and that you don't mind sharing. And yeah, let's put it in EduConnect uh, and then you can, um, uh, you can get some exposure. Uh, while we're while I'm waiting to see if you would like to ask a question, can you put your little hand up? You right click on the Zoom, and I think uh, you there's a button to put your hand up. But while we're just waiting for that, um, let me very quickly just show you how you do it on OER Commons. Um, I'm going to play the video because the video is easier than me trying to demonstrate. So let me just go back to. Right, let me just go to OVL Africa. So I'm just going to where all our resources are. All right, here's our stuff. Um, all right, so the very last one down here, um, how to share your resource. The catch was OER comments. Let 
It's this one. Tell me if you can hear. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to get one of your digital documents indexed on OER Commons. So the issue with OER Commons is that you can't upload resources directly into their platform. They don't accept other people's files. So we have to find a home for it first on the internet and then provide OER Commons with the link so that they can index it and share it with others. An obvious place to put your resource on the internet and be provided with a link is on your Google account. So if you have a Gmail account, you've already got access to a space on the internet where you can store your resources. Uh, go to google.com. Uh, on the screen at the moment, you can see that there is uh, a normal search field. Can you make sure that you sign in, um, use your, your Google account, put in your passwords, etc., and make sure that your account icon appears in the top right hand corner. Now click on the little Google Apps matrix and look for your Google Drive. Um, they don't always appear in this particular order, so you might have to dig around a little bit, but select Google Drive. Once you're in your Drive, your Google Drive, then you need to find the file that you want to upload. I will click on the new button in the top left hand corner. And in this case, I would like to upload a file. It's allowing me to have a look through my file explorer on my PC. And I can see, for example, that that is the item I would like to upload. So I click on the open button and give it a few moments while it uploads it uh, through my internet connection onto the internet. And it is now part of the Google Drive. Now, normally Google Drive is a very personal space where you have access to your private files, but it is possible also to get public links. And that's exactly what we need for OER Commons. You can right click and then say, get a link. Now notice that originally it says that uh, this link is really for only people that you invite. But that's no good because we want people to come from all around the world uh, based on OER Commons recommendations. So you need to change the setting to anyone with the link. All right, now we've got the link, it's, it's in green and uh, we need to get a copy of it because we're going to use it in OER Commons. Click the little copy link and then you can say done. With that link still in memory, navigate to oercommons.org and make sure that you are signed in. You can't submit contributions to the database if you're not already signed in. Uh, we have a video above about how to create your profile. So make sure that you are signed in and um, then you can go onto your account and you can say, my items. Now, I've done this a few times, so I've got plenty of items in my, in my bank. Um, however, um, when you first come in here, you probably have nothing. All right. So you then need to click on the contribute to the OER Commons. And you can see they I'll give you a couple of options. Are you going to submit from the web, which is what we're going to do with our Google link? Are you going to author your OER in OER Commons, they have their own little authoring system that's open author, you can go that route if you wish. Uh, and you can create a group as well. So you can start a little community around some of your open resources. But for today, we just want to submit from the web. And the first thing it asks you is, what is the URL? What is the web address of that particular resource? Now, hopefully, your Google Drive link is still in memory so you can go control v right run your eye over it does it look right yes drive google.com looks good and then you can select continue you move on to step two and now it's once some metadata it basically needs you to describe the resource so that it can put it into 
it's search algorithms. So when people are looking for things similar to what you've got, um, then they can recommend your resource. So it's, it's worth spending a bit of time here. Um, I'm just going to clean up the title slightly. Um, here you can, you can put in a, a, a little description about it. Who is the authors? And what is the actual license? So in this case here, I know it is CC BY. You've already had a think about what your license might be. Please choose the appropriate one there. And then you'll see it gives you a little summary of that particular right. Is it the correct one? All right, so how else can we make it so that others can find it in the system? So uh, can you identify what subject area it is? Have a look through. Where does yours particularly fit? I mean, I'm quickly. just going to go quickly so, through this. But, uh, where does it fit yeah. within a specific syllabus? But in our case, it's not really going to work well. If you have a look at the list, they are American. You can skip the section. You don't have to fill it in. Um, then the next item there is curriculum. Is it all right? So then you can have a go. Are you happy with well, the syllabus? Sorry. So fill in those fields. You don't have to look at you them see individually. Now on the screen, step three which is basically a summary. So you can have a look through the summary. Are you happy with the summary? And then you can click submit for review. What do we mean by submit for review? Well, the last step is uh, a quality assurer at OER Commons will engage with your material and just make sure that it's up to scratch. So don't put up any rubbish. Uh, it takes about a day for the reviewers to have a look through it and make sure it's all been filled out nicely. Keep in mind, however, that should you delete it on your Google Drive, then the link is broken and they will remove it. All right. Okay. So those are your two options in terms of um, uh, putting your OER somewhere on the internet so that others can um, share it. So you can see the EduConnect one is much easier. Uh, it's, but however, the audience will be almost exclusively Zimbabwean. All right. If you want to share it with the world, then it might make sense to find, go through all that rather complicated set of steps uh, in order to get it registered on uh, OER Commons. All right. Any, are you guys happy about where you can put it, tutorial four? I'm hoping that yes. All right, which brings me to the last activity for um, this copy uh, for this session. Uh, we now would like to get some feedback. Um, we've never done remote teaching quite like this before with the Zoom and the WhatsApp and uh, also with all the different tutorials. So we would like to get some feedback from you in your opinion, based on your experience and your proficiencies, uh, to what extent do you think this training model works? Um, and to what extent does it not work, right? So we want you to be brutally honest uh, and let us know. So um, I'm going to put the link in the WhatsApp and I'm going to put it also in the chat so that you can um, uh, have a go at it now, right? Now while we are here, um, in the group one. All right, all this stuff going on. Mm. Okay, all right, let me just put it in. All right, so I've just loaded it into the WhatsApp and let me also put it in the Zoom chat so that you can uh, access the link there. All right, so whatever's easiest for you, either use your WhatsApp or use the Zoom chat and access the questionnaire. So can you work through it now and um, give yourself a five to seven, maybe eight minutes um, and fill it in, please. All right. I'll get it up on the screen so you can also see it, see what it looks like. Great. All right. How are we doing? At the moment, we have 13 and the results are very interesting. So thank you, people. And if you haven't submitted yet, keep going. Keep, keep putting the data in. It's very valuable and very useful to us. We are doing some research to see how we can 
um, improve professional development in these rather trying times. So uh, this data will be reported on, et cetera, anonymously. You don't have to worry um, about what you're saying. We want you to be honest. Um, but yes, it'll help us uh, reorganize the um, the course so that it becomes more and more effective. What is interesting for now, uh, 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 please continue. If you're not yet submitted, keep keep filling the form in, uh, but you can listen to me while, while you're doing it. Um, the, if you look at this one down the bottom here, we asked you this question. We said, um, do you think you could use the tutorials to do professional development at your school? All right, so um, could you become me for your colleagues? All right, so the idea is you, you might have the benefit of being able to meet them face to face. I'm stuck here in Johannesburg. But uh, the idea is that the tutorials are available for you to use if you feel that they are relevant to your colleagues. All right, uh, we've given you the URLs. You can just use them like we've used them now. Um, and um, you could get your colleagues to work through maybe a number of CPD sessions in the afternoon. Many schools run con continuing professional development sessions for their staff. Maybe you could um, run one or two or three or four. We've got four options um and uh, help people out i see the vast majority of you said yes you think this is something that you could do all right 92 percent um said so so feel free there there's no cost um oer africa is hosting them unesco uh, uh paid for them to be developed so they are now a teaching resource or a cpd resource which you can use with pleasure all right uh, we asked you how much you do this in this next section. Um, this, this person said that they would use the tutorials, but uh, try and turn them into CP, uh, PDF notes, which is interesting. Something that you can hand out maybe in the staff room or elsewhere. Nice. Uh, I will create a WhatsApp group where I will... Uh, send my colleagues information and reading during their spare time. Lekka lekka. So you can even use our model if you want. I mean, um, we're trying to work it out. But if you feel there's something that could work in your community, then please copy us. Uh, would organize the training using the tutorials and the Zoom platform. All right. So you can see I've done so much Zooming in the last year and a bit. I'd much rather come visit you. <laughs> but... Um, Zoom does have a place. You just have to be a little bit careful that there's not too much talking going on because then people just disappear. All right. So there's, uh, unlike a face-to-face -face meeting where they can pretend they're listening with Zoom, you, you can quite easily do other things while it's running. All right. So uh, yes, you can do Zoom. Uh, this person says, I will give the colleagues time to interact with the tutorials and then actively uh, get involved, like posing questions. Yeah, I like that idea. That's a good one. I would make use of the videos for each and every part of the tutorial, and we'll also have some PDF notes. Uh, we will use at our school capacity building sessions. Right, I know a lot of schools do do this. I know my school when I was a I was a high school teacher for many many years. Uh, we used to have Tuesday afternoons when we would have at least, an, uh, at least an hour on some CPD initiative. So sometimes it was school management, sometimes it was teaching and learning strategies, sometimes it was computer skills, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, I know a lot of schools do do this. Um, so yeah, maybe volunteer to do a OER session. You've got the resources. All right, cool. All right, how are we doing? Let's see how many we got now. We've got 15. However, we really want, I see at the moment, there's still 27 people in the system on the Zoom. Uh, we, want, we want all of you to submit. All right. So uh, keep, that, keep that in mind. All right. It's coming up for 50 minutes. I try and keep these Zoom meetings not too long because then everyone just goes to sleep. All right. So we're going to start wrapping up. Uh, is there a, a UNESCO person here who would like to give a closing statement. I mean, it's not, it's not the end of the training, it's just end of module 2B, but I just wondered if someone would like to give an official view. Who have we got? Let me look at the list. Yes, thank you. I'm still there, Andrew. Yes. 
Like, yes, well, this, yeah. this group, this is the end of 2B for them, although they've got to Wednesday to submit all the, all the documents. Um, but I thought maybe you could just give a closing statement for 2B. Yes. Yeah, thank you, colleagues, for the participation. And this is a valuable contribution to our teaching practice. And I believe that uh, you came out of this process changed. And this is a new area, you know, the country has experienced the COVID-19 with impact in the school system. So we hope that you're going to transform teaching and learning and improve education outcomes. And I would like to thank Andrew for the session that was well prepared and done. I hope we're all going to continue to support this initiative. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Look forward to seeing you in the next session on Monday. Yeah. Over to you. Shame, Group One. You were guinea pigs. All right. So we've learned already just from you guys um, how we might do it slightly different for Group Two. But um, yeah, we're we're going to be pushing on to, uh, doing another uh, three groups. And uh, yeah, so I'm around. However, I'm hoping this COVID will sort itself out, and then I can come visit you again, or you can come here if you really want. Why would you want to come to Johannesburg? It's terrible. All right. Um, but yes, thank you everyone from my perspective. Um, I, I, was in, I enjoyed the contributions that we had in Zoom when people were able to speak back and uh, give me some feedback. Very valuable. But what I'm really waiting for is for the OERs. I'm very excited to see what you guys are contributing. And uh, so remember, Wednesday, five o'clock, 1700 hours, uh, you have uh, to upload your resources into EduConnect. And remember, you've got to post. Once it's been approved, you've got to post the, a picture of the metadata page in the WhatsApp so we know to go and have a look for it. All right. Uh, there will be a special little certificate just for Module 2B. I don't know about the whole course, about the whole RTT, but um, uh, we can very easily measure your contributions for Module 2B based on your contributions with the OER. So that's why we're going to have a special little certificate just for Module 2B. All right. Okay. Uh, how are we doing? We've got 21 resources now. All right. Keep them coming. Um, if you haven't done it already, please um, prioritize this. And then please remember to finish your tutorials and to submit your OER by Wednesday. 1700 hours okay okay i've been talking for way too long now uh are there any other questions or queries from the team from everyone can you put your hand up if you have any further queries uh, i see ennett has got his hand up is there a question there hello i'm back again now uh, we are back online but then yeah. uh to be clear uh, are we finishing today and continuing with our our homework, or are we continuing on Monday? All right, no. So we are finishing today. So all the formal sessions are finished, all right? Okay. Uh, however, okay. you have homework can continue till Wednesday, 1,700 hours, 5 o'clock in the evening, all right? All right. Uh, the people who are coming in on Monday are a different group, okay? So it doesn't... Right. So if I encounter any problem, am I able to contact you? Uh, through the WhatsApp group. Okay, so the WhatsApp okay. group will, run, will continue to run. We're not closing it down. So okay. it'll continue to run. You can talk to each other, get help from each other, and then I'm keeping right. an eye on it as well. All right. So okay. uh, any problems, please post in the WhatsApp group. The WhatsApp group is not being closed. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. Any other queries, questions? That was very interesting. That was good. Question. Cool. Okay. In that case, uh, the session is now formally closed. You may leave. And we will talk. continue our discussions in the WhatsApp group. And, um, yeah. So, thank you very much, everyone. I really loved it. Oh, Tarai has got his hand up. Oh, you're mute. You're mute. Oh, yes, Mr. Andrew. Before you go, before you go, 
uh, are, are we going to have any any kind of uh, certification to, to this to prove that we have done to B? <laughs> All right, so that's that is my baby. So based on those um, uh, criteria that I showed for the assignment, though, and so you have to you have to submit two OERs correctly as per those uh, assessment criteria, and then you'll get your certificate. All right, so it'll say you have completed the course and you have submitted to the EduConnect Mopsy OER repository. So it'll, it'll give you two things. It'll say you've done the course and that you have, you have created uh, OER. Okay. So yes, the answer is yes. All right, any other questions? Cool. Okay, guys, you've been free to leave. Uh, I'll see you in the WhatsApp. Thank you, Andrew. <coughs> Thank, Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew, and everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Bye. Thank you, brother.